Hi everyone, thanks for watching and welcome back for another episode of Times Radical. Today, what I have here is a 3035 Rolex day date. It's actually a 18038 Rolex day date with a 3055 movement. But this repair situation can be used on uh, any uh, 3035 movement with this specific type of problem. So in this case, the movement's already serviced. I need to put the dial hands on. I'm waiting for the loom to dry on these hands. They've been uh, re-loomed. Uh, the case has been polished. The bracelet has been polished. Everything's looking really good. So we're just gonna get right into the repair. Now for this specific service, if you're a watchmaker or you've had this watch serviced in the past because you own this watch, you might've had this issue. It's common, not the most common issue, but it does happen and it does happen specifically with this movement. And yes, what I'm talking about is the wheel under this screw, which is the intermediate ratchet wheel. So what happens is you're winding the watch manually. This only happens when the watch is being manually wound. Crown wheels turning, intermediate wheel down under here is turning. This wig wag intermediate wheel slides over into the ratchet wheel and the watch is winding. Now, here is the bridge. In this case, we were able to get a hold of a replacement barrel bridge. So I'm not doing this repair on this specific watch because it's obviously better just to replace the bridge. But let's say you don't have the bridge. Let's say you really don't have the bridge. Let's say you can't find the bridge. These parts are hard to find, and when you do find them, they're super expensive. So, this watch has been serviced, putting the dial hands on tomorrow morning, casing up the watch, checking the day and date, flip functions, and we are going to be all good. But let's say we weren't all good. Let's say we we're really having an issue where we can't find this replacement part. What are we going to do, you know? What are we going to do? So what happens is you're winding the watch. This crown wheel's turning. The intermediate ratchet wheels turning on this post. This post is made out of brass. It's made with brass and it's coated, either nickel plated or rhodium plated, but you can see the plating on this post is disappearing. And not only is it disappearing, it's actually cutting into the post. Now I'd like to show you that, how deep This post has been cut. And just maybe I can.
So that post is worn. When I hold the post, I can feel a definite groove in it. You can see I can even lift where it's been cut. Now sometimes this wheel has been turning so much that it cuts so far deep into the post that it cuts through the threads on the inside. So this is an old school trick. This is an old school repair only to be done if you're desperate and you do not have a replacement barrel bridge. So let's say you're in this situation where this post is worn out and you don't have a replacement bridge. What do you do? Well, the game plan would be to take down the outside diameter of this post and fit it with a sleeve. Now, the interesting thing is we can make a sleeve out of this cannon pinion. This is a 3155 cannon pinion. And coincidentally, this intermediate wheel right here fits right over this cannon pinion. Just perfectly. So that is what we will be making our sleeve out of. And this sleeve will be strong because it's made out of steel. Fortunately, this is a video of something that was done in the past. So right now I'm just basically refurbishing this bridge. Now, in order to cut down the diameter of this post to the exact size that the sleeve can friction fit onto, we need to cut this post with the cutting tool made from another 3135 cannon pinion, which I have here. Now let's take a look at this. You can see how I've cut this cannon pinion. It has a rake angle and a relief angle. On each side. And I've cut this cannon pinion with some hairspring files. So you gotta make yourself a cannon pinion like this, but once you do, you can always do this repair for the rest of your life, essentially. I just thank God that we are able to get these bridges because this repair is not fun and it's always nerve wracking, but that's what you need to do. You need to source yourself a cannon pinion, actually two cannon pinions to get started. Once you have made a tool with one, but you know, if you're a watchmaker, you might have old cannon pinions laying around and you can maybe even find another cannon pinion with the same diameter. Now, what we also have to make is a pilot screw. 
this screw, I can't remember exactly what this screw was originally for, but the threads go right into that post and this screw has a giant step on the top. I've shaven the screw head in a way where it fits into this cannon pinion. You can see that. So this screw can actually be our pilot screw to help guide our cutter as we're shaving down the diameter of this post. So let's get into the tricky business So with a little watchmaking acrobatics, we're able to screw that pilot screw right into that post. And the next thing we need to do is shave the post. with our amazing hand filed cutting tool made from an old cannon pinion. Now, how do we do that? With the pin vise. Now what we do here is we slip the pin vise straight over the cannon pinion. Tighten it down. Now that we have that cutting tool in the pin vise, we can apply some oil. To the cutting tool. just to make sure we're cutting smooth. Now is the patient part. We slip the cutting tool over the pilot screw and we begin turning. Now you got to use pressure. You got to try your best to keep your pin vise straight. You can't rely only on the pilot screw. The pilot screw is a guide. Now the camera's shaking a lot here, but let's see how we're doing so far. You can see a little bit of progress. After a little bit of time, we now have a step. That the piece is drying out. So we need to re-oil.
We don't want that cutting tool we worked so hard to make to get dull. And we want to make sure that that post we're cutting down has a nice smooth cut. I believe it does. So we'll keep going. So I got to tell you, this isn't fun and it isn't easy, but it really gets the job done in a pinch when you don't have a replacement bridge. You can see here, I'm all the way down as low as I can go. You can see here, that we've really cut down the diameter of that post. So that's good, you know? So now all we have to do is cut the majority of this cannon pinion down, just leaving this tip. Now that tip fits right over and will be pressed down and friction fit right over that threaded post. So we're making a sleeve to fit over that post now. So this is a reminder, you know, if you have a Rolex watch with a 30-35 movement and you manually wind that watch frequently, and you don't get that watch service, this could be a problem in your watch, especially if you feel like the winding's getting more difficult. And let me show you why before we go any further. So, here's the watch, okay? You're manually winding. It's working, it's fine. But now look, look what happens to this wheel here, this steel wheel under this bridge. This is the post that we're modifying. The intermediate wheel under this post is the one that causes all the damage to the post that gets this screw through it. Now watch what happens to this wheel that has this pinion going through this channel when the watch winds automatically. So the automatic system fits through this jewel and that's where it automatically winds the ratchet wheel. So this is a simulation. If the watch is being automatically wound, you're going to see this wheel right here slide out of the way and you're not going to see any of these wheels turn. So 
So keep your eye on it right there. Boom, slides out of the way. Now this watch is a day date. It's a 24K gold dress watch. So this watch is probably not being worn every day and probably was never worn every day because the condition otherwise is very good. So if we put on our detective hats, we can safely say that this watch was kept safe, was rarely ever worn. But if that's the case, then when the watch was worn, the person would most likely be manually winding the watch to give it power before he put it on his wrist. And when you do that, you're engaging those intermediate wheels every single time you wear this watch. So you might wear this watch once a week. That means once a week, he's putting this watch on his wrist, giving it a manual wind. Now, this watch has also never been serviced, and it was also made in the 80s, which means this watch is about 40 years old, never had any service, and was most likely being manually wound every time, which means that post has been dry for about let's say 30 years, 35 years. But if you wore this watch every day, that would mean that when this watch is being wound and the automatic system turns, then this intermediate wheel is being pushed out of the way and not engaging this other intermediate wheel and causing all the damage on the post. Now, if this watch was being worn every day also, then we can safely say that the bracelet would have a lot more wear in it. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. The main thing is that you service your watches as best you can. It is really neat and interesting to look at this watch because you can see that this intermediate wheel which is uh, called the wig wag is used as a clutch you can see when i manually wind the watch these wheels turn and engages this clutch wheel into the ratchet wheel like so Boom, now we're winding. Then, after you wind the watch fully, put it on your wrist, and the automatic module is on. Boom, it's being wound automatically. And this wig wag clutch wheel is pushed out of the way. So you see that? So this watch was most likely being worn very occasionally because it is a nice 24K gold watch. But when it was being worn, it was uh, always being manually wound and never serviced. So it's a good idea to always service your watches, especially if you know your watch has uh, this 3000 caliber. The 31 calibers don't have this problem. The uh, 1500 calibers don't have this problem. Um, but this watch does have this problem. Each model watch has its own problem. So that's why we're here today doing this so
now that we have that post turned down, it's time to make the sleeve. We'll be making the sleeve out of this 3155 cannon pinion. The same type of cannon pinion that we used to make this cutter. So let's get straight to it. Now to make this sleeve, the only part of this cannon pinion that we need to save is this top part. As you can see, when you place this intermediate wheel on top of the cannon pinion, that is the only part that we need. So how do we do that? We're gonna to need to do some grinding. So first things first is we're going to cut the teeth off of this cannon pinion. To do that, we'll be grinding. So we just ground those teeth off and the result is not pretty. But we still have a lot more grinding to do and we're going to need to hold on to a lot of that cannon pinion. So I'll show you what I do next. Still going to use the pin vise, but I'm just checking up on how much length we have more to go down. So we slip that in. And when we get a lot closer, we're going to have to keep checking in because we do not want to lose that sleeve that we're working so hard to make. Okay, so we'll see what we're left to work with here. See how much of the sleeve, see how much of this cannon pinion we have remaining. Not much, but still too much. So what I like to do is use a piece of peg wood. I press that tip right in there. I'm going to clean it up, roll it into some Rodico, and you could see how much more we need to take down. We need to take out about half the remaining length 
to manufacture our new sleeve. And when this sleeve is pressed onto a piece of pegwood like this, it's super easy to lose. So we're gonna have to be real careful not to lose this sleeve, not to chip the tip of this pegwood off. But let's go do it. Now I'm gonna be very careful with this here. Woo! Make sure that I keep that I press it down. I do not want to lose this. And even slow down the speed. Very critical moment. I don't, I do not wish this job on anyone. Time to pull up a chair. Time to repress. You also do not want to grind this down too far. And that's right about where we're at. Okay. So I say we're done, but let's check it out. And that's our sleeve. So we can check our sleeve to the height of the post and believe it or not, the sleeve is still, in my opinion, is a little bit tall. I'm just saying. So I believe this sleeve is a little too tall yet still so I'll be taking it down on some sandpaper. Then I'll be using some finer Grit sandpaper. And I'll be using some Micron paper. Now you can see here,
we're actually deburring the edges. as we take it down to the final height. This job is no fun. Luckily, I'm actually doing this for fun. Luckily, we have spare bridges. So this video is for you guys out there who might have to do this repair. I don't know who else out there is doing these type of, <laughs> of repairs, but I know I've had to do this in the past, so I'm just showing you how this was done. Now, this is not something that they teach you in school, and this is not something that I believe they would do at a factory service center, but this is something that you do when you don't have parts and you're super desperate, but yet you're creative enough and work in the type of watchmaking environment where you can explore options on how to do seemingly impossible repairs. So here is our sleeve. You need to move this bridge to a stable place, nice and flat. Find the cleanest part of our sleeve, which seems to be this side. Now look at this sleeve, it's so small. And this is the side that I believe I just filed. What a trip, huh? So we've successfully taken down the diameter of that post, created a new sleeve, and now all we have to do is press it on. I'm actually going to oil the post to make sure that that sleeve can fit down on there nice and gently. Now I press. Now I'm going to, since this is such a special occasion, and I probably won't make another video on this ever, such a rare repair. I'm just gonna show you how that looks. Put that sleeve right over. So. So there we are, pressing the sleeve onto the bridge. Make sure the bridge is nice and level. Make sure we're in focus. I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can for you.
You know, if it's too tight, or going on too crooked, you can even broach it out. But this should be fine. Yeah, so it's actually going on a little too crooked. It means it's too tight. I don't want to force it too much. So I'll be taking it off. Okay, so the sleeve is too tight on the post. It's going on crooked, getting stuck. We don't like that. So what I'm going to do is take my smoothing brooch and I'm going to smooth out that hole. Look at that brooch. That bushing is so small, you know? And this is how you custom make parts in a life or death Rolex day day situation. You know, I can't believe that I would spend this much time doing this. I mean, you know how much money you lose doing repairs like this? When you're doing a repair like this, if the estimate hasn't been done properly, I mean, you're basically working for free. But you know what, you gotta get the watch fixed. You know, you gotta give it back to the customer working or else, or else you don't get paid at all. So that's why it's very important to, if you're a watchmaker, you need to be doing correct estimates. And also, if you're a client to a watchmaker, you need to realize how much unnoticed work is, is being put into the watch. You know, luckily we had the bridge. It's easier to just replace it. But this is uh, for video's sake, super interesting repair. And, uh, I believe it's very educational for a hobbyist or if you're a student just learning. It's advantageous that you know that parts of this job are very unexpected. So let's see if this fits on a little bit better, huh? Just getting worked on all day long. So I know this is insane. 
I've smoothed out the post. I've smoothed out the brooch. I've smoothed out the post, the cutting tool again, and I've smoothed out the post with the smoothing brooch, it's still fitting very tight. So now I'm actually going to cut the brooch with the, cut the post, cut the sleeve, excuse me, with my cutting brooch. This brooch might be a little small. So, bigger brooch? Can't believe I gotta use a bigger brooch on this thing. already so small. But you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Gotta do what you gotta do. Getting wider. Cutting up my fingers a little bit. I think that should be enough. So I'll smooth it out now. I really hope this is the last time I have to smooth this thing out. You know, it's, it's not the most fun job, that's for sure. So let's see if that works. You know, I've done my very best. I've done my very best to show you how I do these types of repairs when you're lacking in parts. Make sure this thing goes on straight. 
I'm changing angles. Okay, so I'm ending up pushing the rest of the bushing all the way down onto the bridge without the pilot screw. And the bushing's pressed down far enough to where it's flush with the top of the bridge. You can see that the work is fairly clean and the threads are in there. There's a nice stainless steel surface. And now we can assemble. I'll show you what that whole thing looks like now. all put together. Even that little intermediate bridge sits nice and flush, which means we didn't make the bushing too tall. And we can tighten the screw down nice and tight. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was definitely a journey for me making this video, making the parts. I still need to go home and edit. And I hope this helps you in one of your repairs. if you ever get stuck. Now, after doing something like this, you obviously would want to throw this in the cleaning machine, clean the watch up. But you can see that that is just one hell of a job. But it works. And that's the point. So thank y'all for watching. Boom. Don't forget, time's radical.